Welcome again to the SEM podcast. Jack and Zach are back once again, and tonight we're joined by the legend that is Paul Christensen. Paul, how are you, brother? Hey, I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Well, we're so excited to have you. What part of the world are you calling from tonight? I'm in Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. All right. Awesome. And you've been listening to the podcast, you know, talk pre-mission, your uh, decision to go on a mission and reaction going to Scotland, and then life after the mission, then we'll go back through the mission and reminisce. So I'll give the time to you, Paul. Sounds good. So my story is a lot like everybody else's that not everybody, you know, but uh, most people I grew up in, uh, grew up in the church and did all the things you're supposed to do. And so um, finished high school, went to Euro college and then just, you know, put in my papers. That's, that's just what you do. And uh, got my call. Um, and uh, read it with family around, and I had four cell phones, you know, held up in front of my face <laughs> as everybody, you know, listened in from around the country. Yeah. And uh, read it out, and cheers, and just thrilled to go. Oh man, that's awesome! And you, you grew up in Utah, right? Yeah. Which part of Utah were you in at that point? Uh, I grew up in Gunnison, which is central Utah, Sampy County. Oh, nice. And then um, I went to BYU. So at the time, I you know I got my call. I was in Provo. Okay, nice, love it. And um, remind us time frame. You you went to the MTC when June two thousand four. Okay, so June oh four to June oh six. Yeah, is that about right? Yep. Well, take us to June two thousand six. What have you been up to since then? It's been a few years. Yeah. Um, so I went back to BYU and just had a blast. Majored in computer science and did the pre-med um, requirements. And then applied to med school in 2000, I think it was 2008, and uh, didn't get in, actually, uh, despite, you know, having the, the things you needed to get in. And that actually ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me because then I um, ended up applying for an internship at Intel in Oregon. And I worked there as a development development engineer for eight months. And then in that same time span, um, I was uh, set up on a blind date with uh, a girl named Ashley. So we were, just before I left, uh, we wanted to do a kind of a big group date um, as roommates with, you know, a group date and it was going to be really fancy. We we're going to rent a limo and go to a nice show and a nice uh, restaurant. It was just going to be, you know, a really, um, big event, you know, for a college kid. Mm -hmm. And I had a hard time finding somebody to go with me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my roommate's, um, girlfriend said, well, you know, you can take out my sister. And so I ended up taking her sister on that big date as a blind date and then uh and then dated long distance while i was in oregon and then got back august or yeah august 20 2009 mm -hmm. and then um and then we got married and then um finished up the year of of school <clears throat> so we both graduated in april 2010 nice and then uh um, we, anyway, so I applied to med school again and the same time that she was applying to dental school. And so we basically applied everywhere that they had a med school and a dental school and ended up in Houston. So, um, we moved to Houston in the summer of 2010 and then, uh, four years of med school and four years of residency and two years of fellowship. And then now I stayed here in the Texas medical center as a physician. That's awesome. And then What's she, your... and then she's a dentist. So we're living the dream, man. That's amazing. What's your specialty is in physician. Yeah. I'm a pathologist. So we run oh, uh, clinical laboratories. Very cool. That's amazing. Love to hear that. And, uh, any kids? Yeah. Two kids. Um, my oldest is three. Her name's Covey. Actually she's, she's two and 11 and a half months. So she's, okay. her birthday's in a, in a week or so. Actually, Sweet. it's on Thursday. Man, <laughs> Thursday. 
It's amazing how time yeah. kind of blurs together when we're older, isn't it? That's yeah. awesome. So she'll she'll be three, and then your other, and then the other. Her name's Poppy. She's um, twenty months. Oh my gosh! You guys got young kids. That's awesome. Yeah, young kids. Very cool. Yeah, we were we were both in school. Made it difficult to you know have a family, and then after school we, I was in residency, so that was difficult. And she was a brand new dentist. Uh, so anyway, no, that so. I can understand. I told, him, I told him he hadn't aged a day. And he, he hasn't. Said, no, he looks I've exactly aged the same. in the last five years. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I believe it. I believe it now. You don't look a day older, but I believe you are older. Yeah, the kids and the pandemic have really taken its toll. Oh man, I can only imagine. Awesome. Well, Paul, take us back to you know the mission. You can start MTC, or if you want to start in Scotland, wherever you'd like. But uh, just go from go from, uh, forward from there. Yeah, so I um, I was going through my files and I found a few pictures, and so um, I want to try that. Yeah, go we'll ahead. We'll see how that goes. Sounds good. Yeah, so if you're listening, you're gonna miss the visual, but you are catch it, catch it on YouTube. So let's see. see. Where's Paul's the pictures. share button? Got it. Sweet. Oh, nice. Okay. That's a good looking group right there. So uh, I saw Andre Zinkowski. He talked about hitting his head on something. And so I've got the, the picture to prove it. He's got this big uh, bandage on his forehead. <laughs> That's amazing. And then uh, I don't know where Richard Midgley is, but he was in our group and he came up. And then uh, Doug Poland and Melissa Crixton. This is Sister Gray, I think was her last name. She, she went to Ireland, but she was uh, Melissa's companion. And then Brent Littlefield, Chris McClure, and Alex Rayfield. Oh, so man. the the theme, I got a few themes I want to tell you about. So one is um, that there's nothing like missionary camaraderie. That's just you know that really got got me through the um, through the experience, through the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, second thing is that uh, I have a lot of life lessons for my companions that I want to just share and uh every one of my companions was so different and um as you'll see basically i relied them relied on them to make uh missionary work happen and then i think the third theme i want to just highlight is how much fun missions are and just man we had a blast so oh, i'm so excited already <laughs> look at that, i'm so prepared so uh <laughs> i love it i was my my companion was chris mcclure Nice. And the MTC and he knew his stuff. And, you know, I had, I had done all the things you're supposed to do. You know, we were, we were, you know, very active and we did a uh, family home evening every Sunday night where my dad would teach us, you know, gospel lessons. And then we did family night on Mondays and I did seminary and the whole thing. And uh, even at BYU, you know, you have to take religion classes. So I had a couple of religion classes. So we're, we're the MTC. It's the first few days. And we're practicing teaching and we're teaching about the plan of salvation. And so it got to be, you know, my turn to talk about the spirit world. And I just totally blew it. I had no idea what to say. I said, you know, it's someplace we go when we die. And I don't really know what happens there. But uh, um, yeah, that was, that was what I said. And it was just, you know, terrible. And and so, you know, I turned to, to Chris and he, you know, he he, he cleans it up for me. And actually, um, the, we we met as a as a group, like the whole the whole MTC group, right after that. And and the MTC teachers were were talking about um, a, a conversation or a lesson they'd they'd overheard where where somebody said basically what I said. And and so I, you know I really got called out in terms of uh, lack of skill. And <laughs> and you'll see this repeat over and over that it, really it's my companions belling me out. Um, so anyway, so let's let's go to the next picture. Okay, so this we went to Scotland. This is a nice picture of the mission home, which is just absolutely beautiful. And then we went to Pratt's Hill, and uh, Richard Midgley decided to join us. And then uh, Andre still got his bandage, of course. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, uh, we all. I mean, we all talked about Pratt's Hill. How you know special that is. Um, and then uh, we met with uh, you know with these pictures that they get. The, the whole group. And then I think this is Arthur Bhutan and Kevin Nelson. 
you guys have been Good. meeting with all these people, so yeah, you'll have to correct you got me. it. You got it's, it. You're on it. Yep. All right. And then we got our uh, we got our trainers. So I know most of these. So I'm going to give it a try. So Roman Bredlow, and I think this guy's name is Newman. Yeah. Carl. Yeah. And then I don't I don't remember this guy's name. Drummond. Oh yeah, that's Drummond. Okay, yeah. And then I don't remember Leak? him. Oh wow. Uh, okay. And then I know Campbell. And then I don't remember this this guy. I don't have him either. Is that Sean Thomas? Oh, I think it is. Looks looks like him. And then this guy, I don't know either. I think that's other Leonard. Leonard? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Sister McGowan. Is that her name? McGowan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then my trainer was Joel Turvey. Oh, and nice. I watched uh, some of your episodes, and I don't think I've heard enough about Joel Turvey. <laughs> call it call him out paul because uh i've been uh in conversation via the internet with joel we'd love to have him come on the podcast okay well i'm calling him out now <laughs> i love it okay so me and joel um right before we uh head out so my first area was motherwell and uh early on i didn't uh i have more pictures later but early on i didn't take as many pictures so i just got a few but a lot of uh, uh, things to say about uh, Motherwell. So, Joel, I basically rolled into the most amazing area that you could ever ask for. Joel had been there with Richard Dunn, and they just, you know, they just had so many cool people that they were visiting. And it was the middle of the summer, so it was just beautiful. And uh, we had a car, a really nice area. And uh, I was about the most homesick uh, greenie you could get. So Joel really put up with me and, uh, and my uh, homesickness. So just uh, as an example, the first day we're, we're going shopping at, uh, I think it was in Asda. And, you know, the first spot we walked to is the, the produce. So there's a bunch of apples there. And I'm just standing there. And he goes and gets a bag and puts a couple apples in and, and I just stared at him and, and then uh, he looked at me and I looked at him and I said, I think I'll get the green ones. <laughs> He's like, okay. <laughs> and then, and then I just was his shadow the whole time and everything he picked something, every time he picked something off the shelf, that's what I would get. You know, I had no idea how to, how to shop for groceries. So I just got everything that he did. And, uh, just was in a daze and then uh, i think uh, the next day or day after we um we were going up to glasgow for a district meeting so we get on the train and i'm i'm so nervous because we didn't go by a pass you know i don't i, I don't have a pass and i don't know how we're gonna get to glasgow without a ticket so we're standing there and then about halfway through the through the ride some you know uh ticket person comes walking down the hall or the aisle asking for tickets and I'm getting real nervous because I don't have a ticket. And, uh, you know, in the end I learned that you can, you can just buy it from him, but I was just so nervous and, you know, lost. So then we get to Glasgow and, uh, I'm just following him because I don't know where to go. And, uh, we, we, you know, we end up at some bus station and then take some bus and end up at Julian Avenue, but I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm totally lost. And I really, as you'll, as you'll find out later, I should actually be paying attention to what bus we're getting on and where we're going. Uh, but I wasn't, I was just, <laughs> man, I was just there. So going to district reading was really great because, um, got to meet other missionaries and get a sense of that, you know, that belonging or that, or that camaraderie that exists and you get to see, you know, who else is there, you know, um, uh, doing the same thing. So that, that really helped. And then, uh, another thing that really helped was, uh, was, uh, Saturday morning football. So we had, uh, Ad, I think it's Adam Rollo and Ben Buckner were in Hamilton. And so they would, we did a lot of stuff with them nice. and then, uh, Caleb Sprague and, uh, uh, is it Blake Farnsworth? Yep. Um, from Aloha came over a few times. And so we just had a blast. This is our, this is our little 
car there and uh um so uh you know i was homesick just you know out of my mind and uh ben and and uh adam really you know were good friends to me really cheered me up one of the things that that they said that actually really helped me was that you know they said you think you can stay out for a transfer i thought yeah i can stay six weeks you know that'll be tough but i can do that and then and they said okay and then when you do that just say hey do you think i can stay another transfer it's like yeah i I think I could probably do that. And then he said, once you've been out two transfers, just say, hey, do you think I can make it to six months? And I thought, you know, I'll bet I could make it to six months if I made it through two transfers. So that, you know, mindset of just taking it one step at a time actually made a big difference for me, especially early on when I was struggling with the, uh, you know, with homesickness. And then uh, another just example of, of that is, uh, I felt like I needed to match whatever Joel was wearing. You know, I thought we're here as a team. I want to I want to wear exactly what what he's wearing. So if he wore short sleeves, I wore short sleeves, and if he wore long sleeves, I wore long sleeves, and if he wore a suit coat, I wore a suit coat. You know, and that really helped me because then I didn't have to decide what to wear. I would just wear what he wore. Um, but the problem was the tie. You know, I didn't have the same ties as him, and. Honestly, I, it was difficult for me to decide what tie to wear in the morning because I was just so overwhelmed with <laughs> everything. <laughs> so I had all these ties that that my uh, parents had bought for me, and um, anyway, it, there were a few times where Joel wore the the green mission tie for a, a day, other than um, other than the district meeting or zone meeting, which was where we were supposed to wear them. And I, you know, I asked him, and I don't remember what he said, but, you know, I wore my mission tie those days because because that's what he was wearing. And then I I decided that it was so much easier to just wear the same tie every day, because then I didn't have to decide what to wear, and that was one less decision that would you know I would struggle with in the morning. So I I um I got all my ties and I I put them in a box and I mailed them home, and I just had the one tie. Uh, my whole mission. Seriously? Yep. Oh man. That same that... green tie every day. Was it a total rag by the time you went home? Yeah, actually, you know, I think about halfway through I did buy a new one from the office. Okay. That's All right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, same uh same style. Oh man, that's amazing. Yeah. So Joel had a a way with people and an approach to the work that was absolutely unparalleled. And um, so once we did a service opportunity and I asked, hey, what's the plan for bringing up the gospel? And his response, if I recall, was that there was no plan. We were just going to go do service. And so then we did service and then we just sat around and chatted about, you know, nothing really. And then, uh, and then after the yard work was over, I ran around in the neighborhood with the kids and he just sat and talked with the kids' parents. And, and it turns out we spent a lot of time on that street over the next six months. Um, and it was just, just his way with people. Hmm. So, you know, again, I just walked into this amazing situation and, um, anyway, just was focused on being home but you know got over it and uh joel found really creative ways to give me breaks from the work so we would go on runs we would see pretty areas in the in the you know in, in our area and uh we we read some books together that just really put my my mind at ease so anyway to this day i really look up to him and unfortunately he was transferred after just six weeks um, to be a traveling missionary. Wow. So this was, uh, me and Joel and Ben and Adam at, uh, I think this is either Sterling Castle or Wallace Monument. We went to both of them. Uh, Winifred was from Hamilton was kind enough to yeah. drive us up. <laughs> That's great. So after, uh, Joel got transferred out, um, Scott Allred came in and uh, maybe a lot of people don't know him because uh, 
well, I'll get into that. So anyway, he was a, he was really diligent, hardworking, but it was kind of like the blind leading the blind. He was out four months and I was out six weeks. Hmm. I didn't know how to get to Julian Avenue. So we, we got lost several times and missed <laughs> at least two district meetings um, because we ended up in who knows where in Glasgow and then ended up just going home. Um, so I should have paid attention to which bus to get on. Um, and then both he and I, but in particular him, got sick a lot during the companionship. So um, some respiratory viruses that kept us, you know, inside um, several times. And then also he just lost a lot of weight. And uh, after eight weeks together, he was transferred to the mission home. Mm. So, and then eventually, so he worked in the mission home for a while and then uh, I think eventually went home. Interesting. So then Luke Newcomb was, was a traveling missionary. And when Scott got transferred to the mission home, mid transfer, Luke came and spent two weeks, two weeks with me. And, uh, I only got us lost a few times, so that I was getting better. Um, <laughs> but one memory I have with Luke is is um, we had met this really just incredible Scottish family, and we had this nice dinner with them. And then after the dinner, we had just a really amazing first lesson that probably if photographed, it would be an official church material. It was just so perfect. And and then Luke, you know, ended up moving on, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, then, you know, in the follow up, um, a major regret I have is I totally blew the the follow up. Uh, very inexperienced and uh, prideful in my follow up, and just really blew it. So, one regret. Well, lots of regrets, but that's that's a major regret is just you know um, that I wasn't more aware of how to how to do the next step. Yeah. And that comes with time though. Right. It's as a new missionary, it's like, you got to follow the lead eventually and then figure it out. So don't, don't beat yourself too much. Uh, yeah. Beat yourself up on that. ball. Yeah. So then the last two weeks of the transfer, um, Scott McAndrews, who I think you've had uh, actually early on as a, as a guest. Yeah. And so these are a couple of the families that, uh, that we worked with and, um, so Scott was my third companion in that six weeks. And uh, he and I had already been friends because he was up in, uh, uh, he was in the Glasgow zone. And so we'd been seeing each other at district meetings and zone meetings. <clears throat> and one of the things that really struck me about, about Scott is uh, he told me, I seemed like a missionary who had his act together. And that really startled me because I struggled with, with approaching people uh, I struggled with teaching clearly. I struggled with building and maintaining relationships with the people we met. But at that time, his comments really, you know, gave me some confidence because at least he saw something in me that um, that maybe, uh, you know, I didn't see myself. So I really appreciate um, those comments in the couple of weeks I had with Scott. That's cool. And then Jeremy West came in. So this was my, what is it? One, two, one, two, three, four. This is my fifth companion in the same area. And with Jeremy, I was just ready for a change. Um, it was, you know, a starting, you can see this is November 27th. So it's, it's dark at 3 a or 3 PM. I, that struggled for me or I struggled <laughs> with that. Um, but the thing about Jeremy is he had been out, I think, about a year, and he was friends with everybody. So um, this is the mission camaraderie again. He just we went to meetings and everybody knew him and everybody just, you know, had just, you know, they just had so much to talk about. And I just got a glimpse of, you know, what 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 the rest of my mission was going to be like as I made friends and moved around and and saw people. And as you see, he had these really stylish one-piece red pajamas <laughs> that he would wear while decorating for Christmas and uh, dictating. Pretty awesome. Dictating a log for uh, for his family. <laughs> so good. That's very Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so then uh, I moved to um, Paisley. So I was in Motherwell for six months, and then I moved to Paisley. And in Paisley, I was only there for six weeks. And again, I didn't have a, I didn't take a lot of pictures in Paisley. Again, it was you know it was December January, so mission work is I think is a little different in the December month. At least it was for for me. And uh, you know, early sunsets and rain. <laughs> So, um, let's see. So one thing that, um, so Robert is actually an incredible musician. And if I had to do this transfer differently, I would have, I would have played to that strength as much as I, as you know, I would have put him in, in as many situations as, as we could for him to be on the piano. Um, you know, we, we knocked doors and GQ'd and, and, uh, just in retrospect, I think he should have been playing the piano for people. And Paisley has this really beautiful abbey near the city. And so one of the things we did is we went to a Christmas Christmas concert there. Um, it may have even been the 24th. And that was just that was just magical. So if you've ever been in Paisley or seen the Paisley Abbey, that is that is just something to see. Hmm. And then this is these are some of the friends that that we worked with um, during that transfer. A lot of fun memories with them. So after six weeks, I got moved to Montrose. And in Montrose, um, I, I uh, teamed up with, um, with Sean Bird. So I think Sean asked President Vreens for a companion who wanted to work hard. And even though I was out seven months, I was still uncomfortable chapping and GQing. But uh, work hard was my middle name. So, uh, so again, you know, riding the coattails of my companion, I just showed up and Sean went to work and I was along for the ride. So we had a lot of fun. He was an absolute blast. We had, I think Montrose has absolutely the most amazing flat in the entire mission. It's got this beautiful view of the ocean. The sun rises just in the perfect spot, especially in the summer where we, when we were there, just an absolute treat. One of our P days, we went out to a, a what's called Lunan Bay, which to this day is is one of my most you know favorite places in the world. Even though I was just spent you know a couple hours there. <clears throat> so, you know the the camaraderie and the fun. So just you know the district meetings just were always a blast. So let's try again. So I think this is Sister is it Sister Webb. Sister Webb, yeah. And Sister Roberts. And then Green and Malloy were together. And then it was Barber and Magner. And then um, Muirhead and... No, Muirhead and Magner, Barber and Farnsworth. And then me and Sean. And then another transfer. This is so like Crixton and Heap. And then Muirhead and Magner. Vertigum. And I don't know who he's, maybe he's with Barbara. I'm not sure. Um, Farnsworth Stout, right? And and this is Elder Webb. Did I get yep. it right? Yep. yep. Okay. Just just a blast, you know, at all these meetings. And here's my, here's my short hair. As you saw, it's curly if you let it grow. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Love it. Just, just, you know, just such great memories of, of getting together with these guys. Um, Bowling with this is um, Taylor and uh, uh, George me. Willis. Willis, that's right, George <laughs> Willis. I think we George, went bowling three times. George, come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, we played. I think we played football one time. Um, oh, that was when I. That was when I met you. Yeah, I'm that. Yeah, that dude. That, that yeah, fresh yeah. kid holding the football. <laughs> the, not knowing what the heck I'm doing, but yeah. man. That was that was a fun day for sure. That was. So let's see. Stout, Bjorke, Webb, um, Noble. Yep. Vertigum, Bass. Um slipping my head, my mind. Matt Fisher. Fisher, yeah, the Fisher. Breadlow, Farnsworth, um, with the P. Bilkington. Bilkington, Buckner. 
Conway Barber. Yeah, that was that was a good group. Yeah, so we uh, we had a baptism and we uh, volunteered to fill up the font. And the Montrose building was brand new, so it never been filled up before. And they had this this drain um, to you know keep the water in. So we'd never done this before, but we, you know, we thought we were doing it right. And, and the drain was, was coming out of the font, but we didn't notice until there was like four feet in the water. So, well, maybe that's two feet anyway. So I volunteered to save the day. I don't know if this picture had ever be, be made public, but I got the, uh, I got the confidence. So anyway, that's amazing. So we took care of the drain. Oh my gosh. And then this is, uh, so Sean met, Sean is the person who found every person that we, that we worked with. He just, man, he was an all-star. Like I said, I was just along for the ride. So this is a group of people that really became good friends. And it turned out that Monday evening worked for them to meet. So we called it Mormon Monday and it was Monday nights in the evening. We got together and talked church stuff. So that was a lot of fun. And then these are a couple of the, um, families that we worked with and just had a lot of fun with. And then this was the last day with, uh, with Sean when I was getting transferred. Um, so Sean is just can't say enough good things about Sean. He's unassuming best friend to everyone. And we had the absolute best time working together. Um, and he found everybody we worked with and I was just happy to, be the sidekick, you know. We have a bird scheduled, Zach. No, Sean. Sean, please, please give us a date that you can come on the podcast. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> he he has said he will will come on. I've suggested dates, and I've had radio silence. So I'll keep <laughs> I'll keep trying. We'd love so to I, have Sean on the podcast. Yeah, he, he's the best. <laughs> so I got moved to uh, to East Kilbride with uh, Jason Ford. So, um, Jason was totally different from Sean, but I learned just as much from him as I did, as I did from Sean and from my other companions. So he had a way of just being able to connect with everybody that we bumped shoulders with. He had something in common with everybody. And, and in particular, I've been out a year now and, and thinking I know something and I just, I made everything so complicated and it turned out, you know, it basically every one of our lessons would be me teaching something really complicated. And then him, him taking a turn and saying, all right, let me explain it in a way that, you know, that you can actually understand or that's a little condescending, but um, <laughs> he didn't say it like that. You know, it's just like, you know, just simplify it. He simplified it. And, and actually to this day, the the way that he approached teaching impacts how I try to you know do my job and and with the people I work with and it's it's all about clarity and simplicity and he was able to do it in a way that you know I'm still striving to do. That's great. So this was I think our first day and uh, anyway another picture. This is right outside of our flat. One of the things about my time with Jason is we did a lot of service. That was a really good way for us to, um, I think, um, connect with people and 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 do good work. So we just we were always looking for ways to help somebody move or help somebody paint or help somebody in the yard. So that was a big theme of our time in East Kilbride, and it was actually a big change up, you know, from my time with Sean. But it was good, good mix up. And uh, I was the district leader, so I had a chance to do some exchanges, including meet back up with Chris McClure, my MTC companion, back in Motherwell. So that was fun to, you know, see your stomping ground. And we just had a lot of fun. Here's another district meeting. So this is it's Schmidt, Dracocardos, Hawkins, yep. Ford, me, Divine, Rhodes, Farnsworth, Zinkowski, and McClure wearing the wig. <laughs> The wig. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I think one of the the you know consistent memories of the mission is going on uh, 
zone activities or there was usually, you know, soccer, football or capture the flag or whatever. <laughs> so this was the one from that transfer. And I'm going to, I don't remember as many of these people. So I think that's Detavio. Yeah. And then this is, um, you've had him. No, that's Dracar uh, Cardas again. Oh yeah, Dracar Cardas. Yeah, that's right. Archambault, Divine, Ford. I don't know. I don't remember him. I think it's uh, Elder Bergen. Bergen. That's right, Bergen. Barnesworth, Borders, Dr- Drummond, right? Did mm-hmm. we say Drummond? Schmidt, Cardenas, and there's, I don't, I don't know, there's a hat, I can't tell. <laughs> and then I don't remember who, his name either. That, that looks like Chris Mace, Skinny Mace. And... I don't think it is. Oh, it's not? Man, it looks like him. Interesting. Okay. Somebody will have to tell us in the comments. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love it. And then at uh, this time, Adam and uh, Rolo and uh, Bradley. What's Bradley's first name? I can't remember. Jared. Jared Bradley. They were the APs. Um, but I thought I included this picture because uh, they, they were consistent leaders for me. You know, and Adam from the very beginning was was uh, I was bumping shoulders with him. So just really great examples to me. Um, and this is one picture of many, you know, that I that I chose to, to include. Nice. And again, let's see, this is Blake. Blake was, man, Blake, we followed each other around everywhere. We were always together. This is Taylor, Fish, Archambault. And then this is a family in um, East Kilbride that we spent a lot of time with. And then the last day with Jason Ford. It's awesome. So after uh, after East Kilbride, we got whitewashed, and I went to Edinburgh to work with um, Connor Muirhead, who's an absolute powerhouse of a missionary. So he had been my district leader when I was in Montrose, and then I had the fortune. That um, opportunity to be his companion. Again, I'm just writing the coattails of of my companions. I hope you can uh, see that theme. So Connor basically was perfectly obedient um, to the spirit of the rules. You know, when when things were loose, uh, that was okay. But we were we were we were hard workers. And the thing about Connor is he was always coming up with ideas for how to how to improve. And so he made several changes in the way we worked. Um, and I think for the better, at least it fit our style. So one of the, I think, things that's pretty unique about my uh, companionship with Connor is we shared uh, our food budget. And so we would, we would, you know, have double the budget and then we would buy things sort of um, basically the same. And, and we always ate the same thing. And uh i've never eaten better i never ate better than than when i was with connor because of because of that way of doing things and also i think created a level of unity in our companionship that i hadn't experienced um we met a lot of people when who wanted us in in their homes our schedules were packed and with connor i taught more lessons than i did the rest of my mission um many with with the members the members in edinburgh really gave their time to the people connor and i were teaching so also moving to edinburgh you know you start doing the the zone leader meetings so that was that was another opportunity to you know build camaraderie and just looking through this uh i don't know this lineup it's pretty pretty incredible the the people that i got to bump shoulders with so i think you just had um, Trent Clawson on, who's a just star, and then uh, Bre- uh, Brownlow. I don't remember Elder Brownlow's first name. Um, Tom. Tom. That's right, Tom. And then Menini Farnsworth again. He keeps showing up. Poland, Webb, Muirhead, um, Allen, and Elder Bautista, who we know is basically the most Christ-like person in the world. Um, <laughs> It's just because of that story of praying while while golfing. I know that for a certainty. 
so good. So right after moving to Edinburgh, it's August, and it's just the most beautiful time in Scotland. And I, I probably haven't said this enough, but uh, I had a car almost my entire mission. So the three months in East Kilbride and the six weeks in Paisley, I didn't. But other than that, I had a car. So here I am. You know, it's August. It's absolutely beautiful. We've got El Muirhead. We've got a car. We start off with the with the tattoo. With you know, it's just missions are just so much fun, and it's fun to remember all these you know all these uh, fun things. So this one of the themes of Mark my time in Edinburgh was um, different flats. So we had three different places that we lived. This is the first one, which, which was right next to the grocery store. And that is, you know, just a real uh, luxury when, when you're a missionary. So that was also part of the reason why we ate better than I did the rest <laughs> of my mission. It was, it was walking distance. Uh, even though we had a car, uh, it's just really special. And then after some time, we we moved to this flat, which again is just really nice. And it it was the bottom floor. It had this beautiful view of uh, this, you know, greenery area in the backyard. And so I I would sit in the desk right by this window for my morning studies and just watch the sunrise every day. Just really, really nice. And then you know eventually it turned to winter, but the sunrises were just as beautiful and the view was just as great. So the second flat in Edinburgh although not right close to the grocery store, just was a really pleasant, pleasant place to be. So it's not as good as Montrose, but, but the second best flat in the mission that I, that I saw. And then this was the, this was the third place. It was a little cottage that, um, that we moved into just near the end of my time in Edinburgh. And it again had this just really nice view. What was the reason behind moving so much? I don't know. Elder Lemon told us to move. So <laughs> Fair probably a, a lease. A you reason. know, probably the first lease expired, and then the second one may have been a short lease and wasn't okay. renewed. Okay, interesting. So this is this is Connor and I's shared budget, and I don't think I had ever intentionally made a salad with vegetables as a missionary, but but this is how we how we ate and it was just delicious every time there was one day in particular where we just just had a really awesome day you know the appointments held lessons went well the schedule worked and we just came home on fire and thought there's nothing that can make this day any better and we get home and and the neighbor had set out this jar of fruit with cream with a really nice note uh thanking us for a you know a video that we had left for her and so we enjoyed our fruit and cream after the best day, you know, ever. Oh man, That's that awesome. takes me right back to Scotland. <laughs> fruit, a fruit, fruit bowl floating in cream was yes. the, the most different, <laughs> different variety of dessert that I'd ever had in my entire life. But it was nice. Yeah. So anyway, moving on to the fun. So we 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 went to Falkirk um, for a P day. And I don't know where um, Kevin Anderson and uh, his companion, I think it was John DePold at the time, found all this stuff. But they got all this this uh, wood and tools, and we made these go karts. <laughs> so we made, you know, one team made this one, and the other team made uh, made this other one, and then uh, and then we raced them. So let's see if this works. Can you hear that sound we while I'm playing it? Audio. We can't hear the audio, but the oh, video. that's too bad. Well, we'll do the we'll video. Just play the video. <laughs> that's epic. That's amazing. <laughs> So were the go karts a flat find for the next missionaries that came? Yeah, in? I don't know. I don't know. It? I don't know what they did with them. 
<laughs> so we went down several times and eventually um this team's go-kart broke and so we declare ourselves the uh the winner nice so this is Bockel, Loganberg, Anderson, and then the others we've talked about. Yeah. So this is this is more camaraderie. It's too bad I can't, you know, I don't know how to get the audio to work because that makes it better. But <laughs> oh, it's so good. You can't hear all the hollering, but they're all hollering. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> maybe, maybe send us those those uh, files and we can share them in some capacity on like sure. the SEM um, Facebook page. So we got John DePole, Loganberg, Noble, Muirhead, Anderson. This is, I think, Aurelio, Bockholt, Rayfield, yeah. myself. Yeah. And then uh, this is also at Falkirk, I think just a district meeting. So a lot of similar faces. Um, this is, I think, Glenn Parmenter. Yep. Fitting with the theme of just how much fun we had and the camaraderie that we enjoyed. Hmm. So I think um, Sister Kenny talked about this, but um, in Edinburgh, there's a lot of missionaries. And, you know, because there's the APs and the office elders. And so it's just a very concentrated group of, of missionaries. And, and I think it was uh, Melissa Crookston's idea to put together a Thanksgiving. So somehow all of this happened and I don't actually know how any of it happened. I know I carved the Turkey, but, but I didn't do anything else, but somehow we have all this food and, uh, and we had this really nice Thanksgiving meal. It's a big group. Holy cow. Great. So this video you can share. This is this is uh, just the group. I'll just try and Stanley, Depol. That's a member, I think. Batista. Mortley. Yeah. Smith, Calhani, Coons. Sister Crookston and Kenny. King. McDonald. Wood. <laughs> and then some others that I've already mentioned. But you can you can put that online, I guess. That's fantastic. A great group. So this was uh an interesting story. So uh, we were we were driving to district meeting and we were passing a bus. And just as we passed the bus, somebody ran out in front of it. And you can see we were far enough in front that we didn't hit them, but they clipped our 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 side view mirror. Oh, and man. and then we you know pull off to the side and you know um took stick around but yeah i took a picture <laughs> but the thing that 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 strikes me about the, my memory of this is i was so concerned about being late for the meeting which just <laughs> is crazy you know <laughs> but that's part of my you know growing up i guess and uh lack of understanding of what's important but at the time the meeting seemed really important so everybody was fine but i included this just because of that you know life lesson <laughs> wow 
So one of the things about the uh, time in Edinburgh is, in addition to a bunch of missionaries, there's a bunch of YSA that are there from <clears throat> colleges that are doing like internships or things at, uh, I think at like the Scottish Parliament and and other places. So there's just lots of new faces and. So we put on this little event just to get them together and and have them meet some of the people that we were working with and uh, also just say thank you because this group of people just gave us all kinds of time for for joint joint lessons always available you know they could have been doing you know touristy things in Scotland but instead they chose to spend their time coming out with us. That's great. So one of the, this is a common thing in Edinburgh. You know, we had Thanksgiving, we had this, and I'll, there's some other things too. Um, this is a, one of my good friends, Yu Yi, who we spent a lot of time with and just as a really good friend. This his, was name, a, his name has been brought up a yeah, lot too, because sure. he, he had a huge impact on the missionary work in Edinburgh. Yeah. So I can understand that. Yeah. He, Connor met him in the street and, um, start of something special. Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, so this was uh, I think this is called Black Nest Castle. I think you have to go watch Sister Kenny's uh, side of the story about Black Nest Castle. But um, <laughs> this was this was before we played sardines, and uh, everybody still had smiles. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh boy. So who who haven't we mentioned? Um I I've mentioned all these people already. Yeah, that's amazing. This is one of the friends that we met. So the thing I the story about um meeting Mary is that it was a really dark, rainy, you know, Scottish evening. We were on a particularly um grumpy street with lots of negative responses to our presence and you know you're ready to toss in the towel and get dry and go home and you decide to just finish knocking the doors on the street and we knock her door and we said who we are and and, and she says oh well come on in and it, you know it's like something out of uh, again like a a church movie, <laughs> <laughs> but she let us in and, and we got to spend a lot of time with her. Uh, this is, you know, I think this is uh, Connor's last meeting with a bunch of missionaries. So um, good time to take a picture. And I think the only person I haven't, Oh, Trodier, he's new. Yeah. And get Garrett Smith up yeah, there by Elder, Elder Archambault. Smith. Yep. So you can see there's been a core group of people that I just bumped shoulders with, you know, and I'm, there's there's a hundred others that I didn't bump shoulders with, but at least those I did, you know, a lot of fond memories. Hmm. So this one's this one's not going to go as well either without the audio, but this was uh, over the Christmas, you know, week where missionary works a little different. And so we were gathered together and we played this game where you take a cereal box and, and you make it increasingly shorter. And the goal is to pick it up with your teeth without putting your hands on the ground. Oh no. <laughs> so this is Blake. Oh my gosh. And you can't hear all the cheering in the in the background, which I apologize for. This is uh, Tom Brownlow. Oh no, that's Blake again. Tom's next. Here we go. With the with the world's shortest cereal box. Oh no. <laughs> and then the winner uh, was actually Sister Kenny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Impressive, Sister Kenny. <laughs> it is impressive. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. 
That's so there's fun. there's a still of Tom doing the uh, cereal box. Oh, so, um, so after uh, after Connor went home, I had a pretty, I think, pretty interesting, maybe unique experience. And that's a president of Reens called me and said, who do you want to serve with? And uh, I said, I don't know. Who do you think I should serve with? <clears throat> and he said, Elder, I'm going to leave it up to you. So I got a roster of the people in the mission and, and, uh, um, you know, thought about it. And I knew since the beginning of my mission, I'd been riding the coattails of my companion and I was just along for the ride. And so I didn't want to mess that up. <laughs> I had a, at the time I had a very poorly developed idea about what, about being, about what being a leader meant. And I thought I wanted some, I don't know, firsthand, like, uh, in your face exposure of somebody who I thought was going to be and was an outstanding leader. So I'd seen Jonathan DePold uh, at Falkirk where he was working as a district leader and knew that that's who I wanted to serve with. And the problem is that he was working with uh, elder Bautista, who is, as we've said, basically the most Christ-like person in the world. <laughs> so to go from working with Elder Bautista to somebody who was writing coattails his whole mission, uh, I think was a bit of a disappointment for for, for Elder DePold. So despite that, the work in our area significantly accelerated with uh, Elder DePold, and you mentioned the impact you Yi had as well. Um, took the, the work to a whole new level in terms of <clears throat> spiritual guidance, connecting with people. I was very stuck in the procedural organizational aspects of the work. You know, that's my strength, the, the books. And uh, I was always just struck by how differently Jonathan responded to situations than I would have, but for the better. His approach was so much more effective at reaching individuals. And I thought back to my time in Motherwell where I I was I was the one who was out running with the kids, you know, and Joel was the one connecting with people. I I uh I think Joel Jonathan was was the right person to um to take what what we were doing in our area to the next level. Let's see. So one of the things we did was uh, Burns Night, so Thanksgiving, and then the uh, the YSA thing went so well that we put together a, a Burns Night and just had a massive turnout with the YSA and the people we were teaching. And I don't know how all this this stuff showed up. I remember that the that the sisters got assigned to do decorations, and somehow they came up with like candles in this brick wall. And let's see. Oh, you can't see it. There's, they had lanterns. It was just, wow. It was just incredible. And I don't even remember where the food came from, came from, but somehow, you know, people got together and we made this happen. <laughs> Somebody brought root beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh oh, that's, that's something else. <clears throat> so a lot of memories of Edinburgh, really special, you know, types of missionary things like this that were different from knocking doors and talking in the street and having that, that, uh, I don't know, that, uh, concentration of missionaries really made this sort of thing, uh, more successful. Hmm. So, and then, and then we, we, we got invited to celebrate Chinese new year. So we went and had all the authentic Chinese food and celebrated the Chinese new year with some of the friends that we were, um, that we had met. And then, you know, the typical uh, district meeting photo. So who's new here? Kanuchi, Cooper, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what's sister? Is it Sister Bautista? It is, yeah. Yeah. And then Gregerson. I don't think I've mentioned Gregerson mm -hmm. before. 
That's right. I think Bjorke was in uh, another picture. Mm-hmm. So these are two of the, the YSA um, group that basically were with us all the time. So this is uh, Sean and Lee. And Sean was a, a visiting student to do an internship, I think, at the parliament. And, and Lee was a local, but um, in, that, in that group. They were with us all the time. And in particular, uh, Sean came in speaking Mandarin. So he basically came to all of our, all of our visits with, with the Chinese friends. And I just sat back and listened. <laughs> nice. I think he even taught some, uh, gospel doctrine, like, uh, not gospel doctrine, but the, uh, gospel principles classes in Chinese for us. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so after Jonathan, um, I was a traveling missionary with Craig Rasmussen. This is the last three months. So again, just uh, just happy to be along for the ride with another tremendous companion. So when we're traveling, we uh, spent usually two, maybe two and a half days with the companionship and would uh, blitz the area, I guess is, is a way to say it. So usually, you know, there was never enough uh, appointments for one companionship. So then you put two in there and you got all the time in the world. And so for every companionship, what we wanted to do was help them find somebody to teach. So we, uh, that's what we, I mean, we just, we gave our heart and soul to try and help each of these companionships find somebody to teach. I think Craig mentioned that we were skipping meals. We'd, we'd, uh, we'd eat a hearty breakfast and we'd go out for about four to five hours. And then we'd take a late lunch at like maybe two, two to, you know, two to three. And then three till the end of the day, we'd be out trying to find people to teach. So we did that for three months, which was gave it all we had, and uh, uh, absolute blast. I I still um, didn't like uh, knocking doors or approaching people on the street, but I'd sort of you know gotten used to it by now. <laughs> so I've got I think about twenty pictures of some of the companionships we we traveled with. I know it's not all, but um, it's many of them. And I've got most of their names, and I've got question marks for you guys to fill in the gaps. <laughs> nice. So this is um, Kanuchi and Weir. Yeah. This is um, Pattenden and Maddock. Yeah, nice. This is Pilkington and Archambal. This is Hardy and, and McLeod. <laughs> That's a great picture of all of you in that one. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, we had a we had a great time with them. A lot of fun. This is Coons and Marsh. This was all the way up in um, it's in north of Inverness. I think it's called in is it Invergordon? Yeah. Uh huh. So they were up there. We had a beautiful drive from. I think we, I think, uh, you know, this is Motherwell and these were the, they were in Glasgow. So then we drove from Glasgow up to Invergordon and had this beautiful drive up past, um, Loch Ness. So that was, that was a really, really nice travel. I don't know, cool. Nice drive. So this is, I think, Petty. Is his yeah. name Elder Petty? And I don't remember his name. Uh, Matt Guyman. Guyman. Wow, it yeah. doesn't even ring a bell. <laughs> it was starting to be a blur. I was from not eating enough, Paul. <laughs> um, Kalahani and Elder Wood. Thanks. Littlefield and Chambers. Yeah. This is Har Harlow and Conway. I think is that Harlow? 
Uh huh. Yeah. A very young Chris Harlow. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> this is Elder Bowton, I think, and Elder Balak. Yeah. Seeing we're all still wearing the green tie, but this is the, uh, you know, this is the meeting, so we're all wearing the green tie. But yeah. I'm sure you'll find other pictures of me wearing a green tie, not at those meetings. This is Elder McConkie and Oliver. They were in Alawa, I think. Nice. This is Streeter. Mm -hmm. Is that Elder Streeter? Uh, yep. Elder Gregerson. And this Elder Datafio. And I don't know who his companion was. <laughs> He's not in the picture. So he'll have to come <laughs> and clarify who, who, this, who the companion was. Okay. This is Elder Price and Elder Boughton. And then uh, this is Elder Schneider and McBride. And then I think Archambault and um, Pilkington were in the same flat. Mm -hmm. We we had, this was, uh, we it overlapped with a P day. And so we went and played basketball, I believe. And Craig Rasmussen absolutely destroyed us all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is Elder Maddock and Kilgore. Nice. They're they were a they were also a really fun group to to be with. Have you had Elder Matic or Kilgore on? We have not oh. yet, not yet. Okay. This is Elder Staten, and I don't remember who his companion is. That's John Powell. Powell. He was one, he was one of my companions. There you go. And then this is the second time I haven't known Elder Petty's companion. <laughs> I think that's McKay Lynch. Lynch? I think so. That sounds familiar. And then this is uh, Elder Fisher. And then I don't remember who this elder is. Joe McLean. McLean? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a uh, I had a chance to think about this, and you just know it off the top top of your head. That's very study it every day. I I could tell you right now, <laughs> Paul. I've got uh, I've got quite a list that I've come to know very very well. So, <laughs> yeah. This is Elder Peacock and Elder Wilkinson in beef. Oh, oh nice, classic Peacock right there with his uh... Oliver and Harlow. Nice. And those are all the uh, the pairs I could find pictures of. I know that there are others. That's, that's incredible, man. That's, uh, that's yeah, that's that's an amazing journal of of photos that you took there. I mean, <laughs> how so we cool. were given one of the mission cars, and and Sister Vereen sent us to IKEA to find a cot, two cots that would fit in the car with our <laughs> luggage. My so we went and bought these cots and figured out a way to lay down the back seat. And we drove around Scotland for three months with these cots. And this is, this was our home for, for three months on these beauties. I can see the old brick phone there on the, <laughs> yep. the, yeah, old, or, yep. the old orange and blue Magic brick right phone. There. And I think Craig mentioned this, we didn't have a refrigerator. So we would go to the grocery store every few days. And just, just we, we just not did not eat eat well, right? This was the total opposite of my time in Edinburgh. Just did not eat well, um, but we we did the best with uh, the situation. Um, and then at the end, you know, you say your, your goodbyes. So this is the lemons um, who really uh, helped me out in some uh, a few pickles I got in myself uh, during the mission. They really helped me out. And then, uh, of course, the Vreens. You would have gone home just before both of them, right? Yeah. Like, like a few weeks, maybe. Yeah, it was um, right before they left, I think. Yeah, that's right. So that's the end. So then I went home, and then uh, you already heard you know, the rest of the story. So this is, uh, this is my wife and my two kids. Oh, and this great. was taken last October, so they're all they're growing like weeds, and 
and uh, we love it. Oh, that's great. S- send that one to us, Paul. We'll use it as our uh, our cover photo for your episode. That's awesome. Sounds good. I got to say, man, you're way too humble. Even on the mission you were, right? Like we're out there playing American football and this guy's <laughs> diving like 15 yards and oh yeah, just I played a little football before the mission, right? But same hey, on the mission I see now. Your little football was like all state football, right? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Utah. Stop being so humble. Tell us, same, Paul. Same on, the, on the record. I, I, I was not Mr. Football. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no, I had that's... I had you know, I, I had the fortune of uh of a quarterback who was uh my next door neighbor basically. We grew up together. So we were just totally in sync. And uh, you know, and then nothing happens without the offensive line. So um yeah, I caught some passes, but this is riding coattails. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Paul. Well done. Well, well Paul, um, yeah, thank you for that that photo journey through the mission. Man, so many good memories and great people that you've mentioned throughout it. Is there any specific memories that you have of President Sister Vereen's that you'd want to share? Um, see, now I'm not prepared. <laughs> I, I don't have a note for that. So, you know, I always looked forward to the interviews. So he would do interviews every six weeks, which I'm sure was just an exhausting day for him. And he did it for every zone. So, man, that would be an exhausting day. And uh, I I was slow to open up. And so, again, I'm, I'm all about procedure and mechanics. And and that's that was my relationship with him. And there were a few situations where I broke down and, and he really, you know, put me in his arms and gave me the biggest hug you could ask for. Um, so that was him. Yeah. Agreed. He, he was very good at that. <clears throat> yeah. And as far as sister brains, I mean, you were in Edinburgh for a decent amount of time. Did you have any specific interactions with sister brains that were unique? Um, yeah, maybe one, I didn't plan to share this one, but, you know, I showed you a few of the events that we put on and, uh, I didn't show you, we took, we did a few events in the, in their living room and I was again, just a naive kid in my mind, this was the mission home and it was, it was for doing missionary work. And so we scheduled this event in her living room without asking her. And we, you know, we had this like cottage night or whatever. And then I found out after the fact, you know, that, that I should have asked her. Obviously that's her home. (laughs) (laughs) So that's probably pretty unique. You know, I was, I scheduled events in her home without asking. and, And then I, you know, was instructed that, that it was her home. Yeah. I guess I guess it's easy to do that though because there's just so much with with um involvement of the mission going on in there that you can easily yep take out the consideration of you know imagine if we had cottage evenings in our flat you know <laughs> that's president president and sister Vereen's flat you know that's that's it's very interesting but uh no I appreciate that that's awesome well, Paul, you've mentioned way too many uh, missionaries for me to write on a single page of paper. Is there anyone in specific that you want to call out, you know, companions or otherwise that we haven't had on the podcast yet that you'd like to hear from? Yeah, it's, you know, it's my companions, right? That's that's who taught me life lessons. That's that's the uh, the best memories of, of being a missionary. So I think the ones you haven't had on that I can think of are Joel Turvey and Connor Muirhead and Sean Bird, Jason Ford, um, Scott Allred. Yeah, and Luke Newcomb, right? Luke Luke Newcomb. It was two weeks, but 
hey, that, that it, counts. It counts. Ask Elder Bear with, with him and I. We spent two weeks together and not, I would never forget that guy. Yeah. Well, um, Paul, thank you so much for making time to come on and chat with us. I know for a certainty that there will be many excited to see your name come across when this is uh, publicized. Um, but just know how much we love you. It's amazing in these instances where we get to sit down with each other. We haven't talked with one another since what, 2005 <laughs> and then we haven't skipped a beat. It's a, it's a wonderful brotherhood and sisterhood that we have from our time together, serving the wonderful people of Scotland. So thank you for, for coming on and participating. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And uh, I can imagine uh, that for every hour you spend doing a podcast, you spend two tracking people down. So um, it's uh, pretty amazing what you're doing. Well, we, we really appreciate that. And one thing that uh, we always encourage everyone we speak to is we really enjoy member referrals. So if you have anybody that you're still connected with that you can help put us in touch with or someone that is eluding us in some, some manner, you know, let us know how we can try and gently coerce people to participate. Because there are a few that we've contacted that have been a little bit hesitant and that's okay. But, uh, you know, Jack and I are looking at it. We're a year into this and we're not slowing down. So it's not like we're going away anytime soon. But uh, so, yeah, just let us know if there's anybody that you know of that uh, we could be the secondary voice to encourage people to come on. Well, good. Well, Paul, again, we love you. Thanks for being our brother in Scotland, and uh, we'll say goodnight to you, all right? Hey, goodnight. See you guys. All right. Cheerio. Yeah.